So let's talk about stinger transitions and how you can create your own just like these. So if you think they were cool, there's a link in the description where you can just download them. But for now, let me just show you how you can create your own. All right, guys, as I said, today we're creating some stinger transitions. And if you don't know what a stinger transition is, this is basically a transition that is most commonly used by streamers or broadcasters to transition from their talk and headshot to maybe a screen recording or a shot from another angle. So these are the stinger transitions that we're recreating today. This is your talk and headshot. Then this is the stinger transition. This is the screen recording and then another stinger transition back to your talk and headshot. So in order to create uh, one of these, all you got to do is to drag in a fusion composition. And I recommend putting this down to two seconds. So I already created a fusion composition. You can just right click in your media pool and then new fusion composition. I already did that and called this stinger transition. So let's just hop into the fusion page. So this media out node is the only node that you see currently. And let's change that by grabbing in our background and connect the background to the media out node. Now on this background one, drag down the alpha channel completely. And that is because before this transition starts, we want to see our clip or our talk and headshot. And when the transition ends, we just want to see a bit of the new scene. So now you have got your background one connected, which is transparent to the media out node. And let's just start by dragging in three different backgrounds. And start out by background number two, connect the output of background two to the output of background one to create merge one. And now go to background three grab the output and connect this to the output of merge one to create merge two. And let's do the same thing with background number four. So far, so good. Let's just do a gradient style. So let's change this color to white and then change the color of background three to a gray. And then background four, we can leave this as black. And then just create an ellipse and connect the ellipse one to background number two. Now on this ellipse one, go to the inspector and there you see width and height. Go into width, double click in there, delete it and type in equals. Now this picker comes up and then just drag it to height. And now once you've done that, we can just control the width and the height with just one slider. In order to create a stinger transition, we have to cover our whole frame for a short amount of time. So that's why we have to increase the size of this ellipse to fit the whole screen, just like this. So in order to make this animation, go to frame number zero, go to ellipse one, go in the inspector and go to center X and Y and keyframe this. And now because we don't wanna see anything, let's just drag this down until it's right outside of the frame right there should be good. And then go forward, maybe to frame 35. And then just let me zoom out a bit more and then just drag it up until it's on the opposite side of the frame, just like that. And now when you play this animation, there is a short amount of time where our screen is completely covered to make the transition happen. Now we have to create this for this background and background number four as well. So let's just copy ellipse one and just paste it two times like that. And then just connect it to each background. Once we go to media out, all we see is this black one because we haven't offset our ellipses. So let's just do that. Go to ellipse one underscore one and just double click on center, which will remove every keyframe. And then just go to frame number four, keyframe the center and just drag this down until it's right outside of the frame. 
and then go to frame 39 and just drag it up until it's right outside of the opposite side of the frame. So now go to ellipse one underscore two, which is our black background. Double click on the center to remove the old keyframes. Now go to frame number eight, keyframe the center part and just drag it down so it's right outside of the frame, just like that. And then go forward to frame 43 and just drag it up until it's right above the frame. So that should be pretty good. Now that is a pretty linear movement, but that is fine for now. Let's just create our text first, which will appear on this black background. Let's go in there and call this whatever you want. Once we've done that, change the font to whatever you like. And then when you want to stylize your text, you can just right click in the text window and go to character level styling. Now this modifier comes up and now go inside your viewer and just drag over the part of your text that you want to customize. For me, it's just this channel part. So let's go into shading, make this just an outline, make the outline a little bit thicker. Let's go back to text and resize this just a bit like that and then give it a nice color. Probably yellow would be fine. So this is pretty good. Uh, like that. So this is all we have to do. But now when we play this, we have this text appear every time in this whole animation. And that is not what we want. So let's now connect it to our ellipse one underscore two. Just like that. And when we play this now, our ellipse one underscore two is revealing our text. And is cutting off our text at the end. So one thing I want to do is to give this text animation some more customization. Let's go in text one, go to the inspector, go to layout, and there you see this drop down menu, we can close layout and open up rotation. And now on frame 12, our text is still hidden. So let's make our keyframe on rotation there and type in minus 90. And then go frame number 37, where our text is right outside of the frame, and then type in 90. So what this does is it gives it a clean little movement. So let's just hit play. And that is looking pretty good. So let's make this animation a little bit smoother. All you gotta do is go to your spline window. And then in the top right corner, you see these three dots and then click on show only selected tool. And then we start out by ellipse number one. Just select this, hit the zoom to fit button, highlight both keyframes, right click on this line, go to ease and then choose out cubic. And then basically do this for every single ellipse tool. And now go to your text because we have an animation there as well. And we can just make this in quadratic. So that is looking pretty good. Now we can just play this back, make this one viewer and just a little bit bigger. And that is the animation that we've created. Oh, that was right. So we have to rearrange our keyframes. So let's get rid of this one and then start maybe on frame number nine. And then go to frame number 24. So once we've rearranged our keyframes, we can just play this back. So that is a quick little transition. And now the other transition, let's just create this one as well. Let's create our a new fusion composition, call this stinger one, and make this also two seconds long. So let's grab this in, and then hop into the fusion page. And to start things out, 
this is pretty similar. Just grab your background, connect it to the media out, go to background one and make this transparent. All we have to do now is grab in two background nodes, which will be our doors. Let's connect them. And let's make them white or a light gray. Go to background three, grab the color picker. So now the first step is to add a rectangle tool to background number two, right there. Let's zoom out just a bit. And all you want to do on this rectangle is increase the height so that it matches the whole frame. And then go to center and on the X ax type in 0 0.25. So right now this is exactly in the middle. And then grab another rectangle, connect this one to background number three. Do the exact same, just until it's right outside of the frame. Increase the height and then go to center X and then type in 0 0.75. That is this and that is this. And now we need um, a DVE node to make this door opening effect. So let's go to background number two, hit shift and spacebar and then type in DVE. And then just click add. First of all, on this DVE one node, we have to rearrange our pivot point. And because this one is the left rectangle, we have to set our pivot point towards the left and that is on 0, 0.0. So now we can go to the Y rotation. Just like that. And set this probably to 90. So we cannot see it. And now on frame zero, keyframe this at 90. Then go forward to frame, probably frame 20. Go to rotation and Y and then type in zero. And then on frame 32, keyframe this Y rotation again. And now go to the end, then type in 90. So all we have done is to make this uh, door animation. The door is shutting, stays, and then reopening. Let's create the same effect for background number three. Hit shift spacebar and then search for DVE. Click add. And now set the pivot point to one because it's the right side. Then go to frame number zero, go to your Y rotation, keyframe this at minus 90. Perfect. Then go to, how much do we go? Go to frame 20. Type in zero. Then I believe it was on frame 37 or 32. And go to frame 32. You frame this at zero once again, and then go to all the way to the end of this animation and type in minus 90 once again. And all we just did was to create this door animation. But this is a little bit flat. So let's go to merge number two. Hit shift spacebar and then search for shadow. And you can either create it that way, get a nice little clean shadow up around the edges. Or if you don't like it that way, because when it's closed now, there is no shadow. But if you like it that way, you can use it that way. Let me just delete this, put this up, go to this DVE2 node, hit shift spacebar and then add the shadow in there and crank this up to 0 0.005. And then do the exact same thing on the first door. Hit shift spacebar and then search for shadow. Add this, crank this up. So now you got this shadow line in the middle. If you don't like that, um, you can just get rid of this, go to merge two, hit shift spacebar, and then just add in one shadow node. So you don't have this shadow node in the middle. And one thing that we can add in between merge two and the shadow one is your text. So let's connect the text in between and call this your channel like that. Increase the size just a bit. And then you can right click in this text viewer once again, go to character level and styling. Now this modifiers tab comes up. And now just like that, go to shading, do some quick adjustments once again, just like that. 
So now once you've done your adjustments, you can go to merge number three. Now, once you've done that, go to a position or the last frame before the doors are completely shut. For me, this is frame 19. And then set a keyframe on blend on merge three and put this all the way down. Now go forward one keyframe and then pull up the blend and go forward just a few frames. And on frame number 32, keyframe this blend once again and go to frame 33 and then drag this blend all the way down. So all that we've done is to pop out our text when the doors are completely shut and our text will fade out once the doors will reopen. And now once we've done that, we have to animate everything. So let's go to the spline window, make sure you've checked show only select tools and then start with DVE one, just select the first two keyframes, go to ease, out cubic, and then select the other two frames, go to in cubic. Now do this exact same thing for DVE number two. I let the first two right click go to ease out cubic. Second ones highlight right click ease in cubic. And now we can we can make an animation for the merge three where we blend it in our text. But this is so quick this is this isn't even noticeable. Let's just do it anyway. Highlight both in cubic and then highlight both out cubic. Just like that. We haven't done any more animation, so let's close our spline window, make this a single viewer. This a little bit bigger, and then let's just view this. So I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If so, please consider leaving a like and a subscribe if you haven't already. But that's all I got for now. Hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.